Hello, and while the, um, the crossword video for today has been uploaded, I thought I might just uh, solve the super fiendish Sudoku. Um, how to solve these super fiendish puzzles actually are proving to be some of the most popular videos we do, so um, we might try and do them uh, more often. Um, so, the usual format for the Sudoku, I'm going to just fill in the obvious answers. So, I mean, here, for example, we can see there's a 4 that needs to go here immediately, just by simple Sudoku logic. Uh, there's nothing clever about that at all. Um, but I'm going to fill in things like, you know, the fact that these two cells can be 4, like this. And we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll do that, and then we'll look at where that gets to in terms of making logical progress. Okay, and the next logical step looks like it's appearing in uh, row nine this time. So here again, I've got I've got five numbers in in this row. So I'm I'm going to work hard to think about where, what the restrictions will be in the open cells. So here we need to place one, two, six, and nine. And just scanning up, you can see we've already got six and nine ruled out from this square. So this square is one and two, and the same things happened here. Look. 6 and 9 again, so this is 1, 2. So that means that we've got a 1, 2 here and a 1, 2 here, therefore this cell cannot be contain a 2, so this has to be a 9. And this cell can only be a 6 now, which is also very helpful. Now using the notation method that we're recommending here which is uh, as the earlier videos discuss is based on the idea that you can only make little numbers in cells um, if within the 3x3 three three box there are only there are exactly two positions that could contain the number now obviously although this cell can only be one of two numbers it isn't true to say that you know, I know the only two positions that a one, for example, could go in this three by three box, and therefore I'm not allowed to make this notational um, uh, or to make notation in these two squares. Now you may think that's pedantic and silly, but the idea of this notation is it allows you to to chain very quickly. Once you get an answer, you can make a a number of entries normally very very quickly once the puzzle starts to crack and that's helpful in speed solving um, so what we're going to ask our brains to do here is to remember that these two cells are, are limited okay just just keep a mental track of it and we're going to use uh, so we're going to stick with our strict notation and go on like that and you can see that the fact that we've, made, we've managed to limit this cell to be a nine forces this cell to be a 9 by simple Sudoku logic, which forces this cell to be a 9, again by simple Sudoku logic. So we've now locked a 9 into this uh, central box in one of these two positions. That's how we've recorded that in terms of our notation, and now this is forced to be a 9. Similarly, the only thing that this can be is a 1. Um, we're allowed to make some notation here like this. And then just looking at this bottom 3x3 three three box here, we've got to place 2, 4, and 8. Well, we've already got 4 and an 8 here. So, in fact, we've now managed to limit that to be a 2. Remembering now this is going to be a 1. And we've got to put 4, 8 notation into this box. And then again, work, working with the new information, always try and use the new information as hard, you know, really work hard with the new information that you have. So here I've just locked the 4, 8 into these two cells. I'm now scanning the row. I can see I need to place 2, 5, 6. I'm scanning upwards. I can see the 6. Okay, so this is 2, 5. Can't make notation, but now the only place that 6 can go in this col in this row is here. So let's, we can actually just write that in and make the notation up here. And the next step it's not too hard to find now. Uh, we just have to again be diligent. So let, let's use another of the sort of new five numbered row stroke columns. So let's look at the central row here. Now I can tell you that you should be able to work out 
the value of this cell. You should be able to work out the value of this cell. Um, so have a think about how you might do that from this position. Um, and right, I'm going to show you now. So we know we know we need to place one, two, four, and eight in these cells. But we actually have a lot of restrictions here because and the, the thing that's slightly difficult to spot is we, we can see the one four here limiting this cell to be two or two or eight. Yeah. And if we look here. We actually have the same restriction, but it's harder to spot. Because, because of the 4 here and the 4 here, a 4 is ruled out from anywhere else in column 2. So we also have a 1 and a 4 in effect in column 2, which means this cell can only be 2 and 8. So we have a 2, 8 here and a 2, 8 here. Now that means that actually we have to place the 1 and the 4 missing in these two cells exactly. And as I said, we can actually we can look up. There's a four already here. There's a four already in column. It won't let me click on it for some reason. Um, but that four there um, rules out this being four. So this has to be a one. And therefore, the four is here. Um, now that ought to be extremely helpful. We can immediately see we can place another four in this position. Um, so we're starting to make better progress now. And now again, we're going to try and use the information we've just got and for force it to tell us more about the, about the grid. So you can see in column seven, I've still got a place a one, a two, a five, and a seven. Let's look at this uh, this cell here. Well, we already have a one and a two here. That means this cell is limited to a 5 and a 7, which I think should be fairly obvious to, to everybody. Now, if this cell can only be a 5 and a 7, the 1 and the 2 from this column have to be in this box. Yeah, That's absolutely forced. And then if we scan across, we can see actually in row 3, we already have a 1 and a 2 here. So this cell cannot contain a 1 and a 2. Therefore, exactly these two cells contain the 1 and the 2. And that's pretty powerful. Um, that ought to be extremely helpful. So we've now got 2 here. We've got 2 here. So the 2 has to be in one of these two positions, but it can only be in this position here. Oops. Two. This is the eight. Eight. Four, four, three. And now you can see the chaining, yeah? Because I'm just scanning there. I'm seeing the I'm seeing I've got a three in this in this three by three box. This three is ruling out this as being the three, therefore I'm putting this three in, and I'm immediately able to put in the one as well. Simply that that's that's the advantage of this notation. Again, I can see here, I can put the 1 and then I can immediately place the 9. And in terms of speed solving, this is really, uh, this is really important, helpful stuff. Forcing 2 here, and a 6, and a 6, and a 6, and a 6. Again, you can see the advantage of the notation, not having to redo earlier work, I'm simply able to to fill in the numbers almost as quickly as I could type. And if you, if I was using pen and paper, um, it would be faster. Oops, that's a mistake. Okay. Just continuing to add the notations I need to include. fairly obvious. Uh, if you look at the central column now, you should now be able to fill in a number in that column. So have a think about that. Pause the video if you need to. I'm going to fill in the answer. Uh, this has to be a 1. It's the only position a 1 can go. Okay. Now we need to place a 2.
And again, you know, just looking at this column again, you should be able to start filling in numbers in this column. So have a think about how to do it if you need to. Um, so again, the, the reasoning, we can see this cell is 5, 8. Well, this is 5, 8 as well. Therefore, the 2 and the 4 I need to place in column 4 have to appear in these two cells. Yeah, and this can only be a 2 because of the crossing 4. So this is a 4, uh, which is now the puzzle's going to um, going to fall. Up. I think it's going to completely collapse. Obviously, again with with pencil um, without having to do this silly uh, mouse work you could be uh, much faster than I'm able to be here but I'm trying to do it as quickly as I can just to give you an idea and a flavour for how quickly you can go so what do we need to place here we need to place the 5 and the 8 so this is a 5 and this is an 8 and that's how you do the super fiendish sudoku